All right, that's all from us. We'll see you. Maybe tomorrow with an Ashbourne recap. Maybe not. No promises. Until then, ciao. All right, time for LRCP to go to the Giro d'Italia. Damn. Good morning. It's about 4.30 a.m. My flight leaves in about four hours and a half, so I've got plenty of time to get there. But it takes about a good two hours to get there, then a good two hours to get on the flight. So uh, still some work to do before we can uh, start heading over to Budapest. Whilst Benji made his way from Belgium, the Rouges were coming down from the Pyrenees in Andorra, staying in Barcelona and then traveling the next morning to Budapest. Look what I found. The Giro. He was the long-awaited, much-heralded meeting Blanton Rouge and Benji Narsen. <laughs> With the formal introductions now concluded, we can make our way stylishly to the Budapest Congress Centre to pick up our accreditation so we could get a bit better access to the race. Got my access card, so I have access to the race. So we're making our way down Andrasi Avenue to the end where Hosok Terra is, the Heroes Gate, which is where stage one. The neutral zone starts, the fan zone is, the team's presentation is, and the start of the TT on stage two at the Giro d'Italia. So we're here, we're checking out the TT course for the Saturday stage two. We're up at Fisherman's Bastion at the top of Buddha. Sorry, I said Pest yesterday. Got the team over my shoulder somewhere, the LRCP team. It's a pretty nice spot to finish a TT. They finished the TT right about where that car nearly took me out. Right about there is where the TT finishes, but you wouldn't know that it's happening on Saturday. There's nothing set up yet. This is like the LRCP version of the Tony Gregg key in the pitch test. There's a few like dangerous points and I don't know, race cobbles, you, you gotta pick your line fairly carefully going up there before that right turn. So the hardest part of the TT is there's a 14% pinch. Can't really see it on camera, trying to get the angle right. There, 14% pinch as they come up this street here, paved. So Ozzo, who's brought his bike over to Budapest, who writes all the articles, a lot of the articles on lanternrouge.com.au is volunteered to ride up this climb for filming purposes. And here he is probably doing I mean is this a normal performance I wonder what Anton Vea has to say about this up to 14% see he makes it look easy stage 2 TT recon done of the, the climb thoughts impressions it's fucking hard <laughs> <laughs> who's favorite MVDP yeah he'll destroy like if I can ride this one minute the steep part he'll do it in 30 seconds easily that was a tt recon done budapest looking beautiful that evening the night before the start of stage one The Giro d'Italia is finally underway. Saw Mr. Wiggins doing his piece to camera. I'm now doing mine. A little less people around me. The rows on Andrasi Avenue got really deep. It, like in the last half an hour before the stage, people climbing up these things, trying to get a better view of the race. So good turnout, but still a relaxed vibe. After seeing the start in the center of Budapest, we hurried home to watch the finish where Van der Poel beat Biniam to take the Malia Rosa in one of his hardest finishes ever before recording the podcast, the first ever recap in person. Stage two of the Giro d'Italia, the time trial going from Hero Square where the stage started yesterday up to Fisherman's Bastion over in Buda across the Danube. They go down Andrasi Avenue where it's all set up here. Benji got up early. I had a sleep in. He went and did a recon with the Yamba Visma team. Where he actually caught Mathieu van der Poel and Amalia Rosa doing a recon of the course before interviewing Barnabas Payak on Intermarche, one of the Hungarian riders in this race. Is there like an uh, internal battle between the Hungarians for the best space on the time trial or not? No, I don't think. I was not thinking of that because we are all uh, uh, actually only Attila is uh, on good time anymore after mm -hmm. yesterday and yeah, there are many good riders so. 
I don't think that we have anything to gain to beat each other. It's uh, I would prefer if all of us were in the top 20. It was cool to see all the mechanics and riders with the TT bike, some of which was being used for the first time or new technology, as well as catching up with an old friend of the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. We've made it to the Border Hansgrohe team bus, the unofficial Wilco Kelderman fan club. He's already showing that he's probably going to win this race. That uphill finish yesterday, we've got Leonard Kamner who didn't he wasn't even trying to win the stage yesterday, he was just showing off and we're handing over the Wilco Kelderman unofficial We'll find a good spot on our team bus, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> now it's time for the highlight of LRCP at the Giro, going in the Jumbo Visma team car with Eddie, which proved to be extremely technical. This was our driver today, Eddie Bowmans, aka the Dakar Rally Specialist. One of the scariest experience. I don't know how you did this chicane. Uh, when I'm on the course, uh, I do my my thing, and uh, yeah, it comes with with the course that you have to ride uh, like that, and uh, you don't uh, want to uh, stay too far behind uh, the rider if he has a flat or something. And also, uh, I uh, honk my horn in the corners that uh, the public is uh, noticed that that something somebody is coming so yeah it was good outside the hungarian state opera simon yates ended up winning that tt but this is the end of the lrcp giro adventure we're signing off we had the sprint stage today cav one not too much happened we had a nice meal and benji and i will say our goodbyes thanks for your support thanks to swift for making this uh, whole adventure possible we'll see you at a race near you soon hopefully ciao